Twitter is cracking down again, this time on the conservative satirical news website, The Babylon Bee. Think the, the onion for the right. They tweeted out a link to an article uh, the site published last week announcing that U.S. Assistant Secretary for Health Admiral Rachel Levine as the site's man of the year. The last paragraph of the story reads, quote, since announcing this award, we've been told that Levine actually identifies as a woman. We have still chosen to give the award as his self-identification has no bearing on the truth. Levine is a transgender woman and the highest ranking transgender federal official. She was recently named one of USA Today's Women of the Year, which is what the B article was playing off of. Purposefully mocking Levine in this way is clearly offensive. It's intended to be offensive. But I can believe it's offensive and also question what Twitter did next, which was to ban the Babylon Bee's account for a violation of its rules against, quote, hateful conduct. Until it takes down the tweet, which the Bee has so far refused to do, it didn't end there. Last night, Twitter suspended the account of Fox News host Tucker Carlson until he and his team deleted this tweet in which Carlson defended the Babylon Bee's article and posted screenshots of it, as well as a screenshot of another banned tweet by a conservative activist. Now, I worry Twitter and other social media giants continue to tumble right down a slippery slope. Does Twitter really want to be in the business of banning satire sites who make offensive jokes some will ask a legitimate question. What if the Babylon Bee had made similar offensive jokes about race or religion? And depending on the facts, my answer would probably be the same, that Twitter banning a satire site is just a dangerous business for them to be in. Certainly they're allowed to do it legally. And I'm not going to support the Babylon Bee or Tucker Carlson's tweets about it. But I think there's a real danger when Twitter goes down the road of determining what is offensive or hateful. I fear this is going to push people even more into their silos and the angrier parts of the Internet where there are platforms that welcome ugly content without dissent. Criticize them if you want. Call for protests, challenge, mock them. But let the users do that. I'm not saying there should be no limits on what people can post on social media. Of course there should be. I just have a really hard time figuring out where to draw that line. Joining me now is Colby Hall, founding editor at Mediate.com, which I founded, and a News Nation contributor. Colby, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate thanks it. For having me. All right, so what do you make of this? I think Twitter has uh, got really good intentions here. They're trying to stop hateful conduct, but I think what they're trying to do is litigate comedy, and that's 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 only going to create a slippery slope. All comedy is rooted in something that's mostly offensive. Well, you have a history in comedy, right? <laughs> no, in comedy writing, and which I is one of the reasons we wanted you on. Yeah, and, if it and, bends, it's funny. If it breaks, it's not. And, and so you're always trying to push that line. Clearly, this was satirical. Um, and, and by the way, Twitter is a private company. And when you sign up, there's, there's language that says hateful conduct that literally cites misgendering a transgendered person is hateful conduct. Let me read that. This is Twitter rules on transgender individuals. We prohibit targeting others with repeated slurs, tropes, or other content that intends to dehumanize, degrade, or reinforce negative or harmful stereotypes about a protected category. This includes targeted misgendering or dead naming of transgender individuals. I mean, look, so there's no question that this seems to be a direct violation right. of the Twitter. But, but my concern is when you start defining content that intends to degrade, my goodness, you know, <laughs> Again, I mean, this meant- is a pretty broad amount of stuff that's on Twitter. And by the way, if everyone who degrades me on Twitter got, uh, got banned, I, I, mean, th- th- there, I mean, there would be thousands I, of I people. But, you all the time. Yeah, I mean, you know. Well, no, I mean, honestly, I think that this is the national conversation right now. Twitter wants to be not the water, but a utility. That's the pipes, right? They don't want to take any sort of responsibility for the language. But clearly, if there's like a threats of violence or hate language, then of course they would stop that. That said, I mean, we're, we're having this national conversation, but where do we draw the line between what is acceptable satire and that which is offensive? And even the, the CEO of Twitter said, like, let's have this conversation. Don't, don't shut us up. If we want to have a healthy dialogue like they say they do, let's then talk this out and let's joke about it. Let's have fun with it instead of 
shutting people down. Right. I think threat of violence is different, right? Then I, I guess, again, my problem is how you define this stuff. Well, the and, definition is the trickiest part. Right, right. And so you have, uh, this is the Babylon B CEO, Seth uh, Dillon, uh, tweeting about the Twitter ban. He said, so let's talk about these issues. Let's debate them. Let's even joke about them. That's how the public conversation is best served. You can't have a range of diverse perspectives on a platform that strictly enforces ideological conformity under the pretense of moder moderating hate. Um, and, and, you know, the, the problem is that, that there are going to be people who are going, many, who are supporting not just the Babylon Bee's right to say it, right. but appreciating that they said it, right? right. Um, and, you know, I just feel like there ought to be a place for those of us who can say it's offensive, right. and yet I still don't think that Twitter should be in this business. Right. If it's, a, it's a playground taunt. You don't, like, pull the kid out of school because he says something offensive. You chide them and say, like, no, that you but shouldn't you, be... But you think, it should have been, you think it should have been off. No, I don't, actually. Really? I, I, I don't. I think this was clearly satire. I really do. Um, I think they also sort of, by suspending it and taking it off brought way more attention yeah. to this than they ever would. I will say one other thing, though. This idea that it's a First Amendment issue or censorship isn't the case at all. Like, this is a private company, and they can, when you sign up, you agree to their rules, they're enforcing but, their rules. But it's censorship. It's just not a First Amendment issue. It's not a government censorship. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Colby Hall, thank you for coming on. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for being here. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.